Space War Space War is widely considered the predecessor of the legendary grandfather of all video games, Pong. It was made by graduate students from MIT in the early 1960s and is regarded as the first shoot 'em up multiplayer game that broke into the mainstream. However, when it first came out, most people didn't know that it was entirely funded by the Pentagon. In the early 1950s, with the tensions of imminent conflict against the Soviet Union during the first decade of the Cold War, the US government knew that technological dominance would lead to military supremacy. The launch of Sputnik in 1957 was a direct consequence of the technological arms race between the capitalist West and the communist East, and the American public believed that the US military and its politicians were way behind the Soviet Union. And even though the US still retained nuclear dominance, the Soviets were rapidly closing in. A year after Sputnik's launch, President Dwight D. Eisenhower created the Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA's precursor. The agency would go on to develop the internet, and military money flowed freely to any project related to computer development, including the electrical engineering labs at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In 1961, MIT's lab acquired a microcomputer and built a Processor 1, or PDP-1. It cost hundreds of dollars, almost a million in today's currency. A study group was then formed by students that would be responsible for creating the first video game. The students were inspired by the culture of their time, which comprised comic book superheroes and fantastical and futuristic novels. The students were also influenced by the space opera works of E.E. E. Doc Smith and used the microcomputer to develop a space simulation. In Smith's words, the heroes tend to get pursued by their enemies across the galaxy, giving the game its context. One of the students then coded a simple rocket flying program that involved moving ships through a collapsed star, while another programmed a replica of the night sky for the simulation. In addition, two players could use switches and knobs to maneuver their spaceships through a gravity field while firing missiles at each other. No one ever imagined that ordinary folk would be willing to pay for interactive entertainment such as the Space War Project. Personal computers in the 1960s were non-existent, and the notion of having a personal computer in a household was unheard of. Still, the team gave the game's code to anyone interested in getting a taste of Space War. A year after its development, Digital Entertainment Corporation, the PDP or Program Data Processor Manufacturer, began including the game with every mini-computer it shipped. The game became a hit in the following years, and some universities even banned it to force the students to focus on their studies. Battlezone Atari released its Battlezone arcade game in 1981, becoming an instant success and an icon of the era's pop culture. With eerie green wireframe graphics, the game put the player in control of a tank wandering through a futuristic Battlezone landscape. The player's objective was to shoot down enemy tanks, UFOs, aliens, and missiles, eventually grabbing the attention of the military brass. The US Army was interested in drawing in more recruits and training them for new combat scenarios at lower costs and they believed that the Battlezone video game could help. Some army officials thought that an adapted version of Battlezone could be used as a combat simulator for the army's newest infantry vehicle, the M2 Bradley. The idea then prompted the Bradley Simulator, or Trainer. The development of this unique combat simulator was shrouded in utter secrecy, and few outside the army and development team knew about it. The armored vehicle eventually went through a lengthy development process. Initially conceived as a simple infantry vehicle, lightly equipped and ready to deploy troops, the Bradley ended up being a multi-purpose vehicle armed with machine guns, cannons, and other armaments that resembled more of a tank. Still, retired army officers were part of the team that shared their armored vehicle warfare knowledge to develop a realistic combat simulator. Atari's goal was to develop a prototype with a think tank and pitch it to the US Army. The programmer of the original Battlezone game, Ed Rothberg, had to be convinced to work on the new project, as he was a pacifist. Meanwhile, many of the people involved in the project saw it as a patriotic endeavor. Still, there were tensions between Atari developers regarding the secret army project. The team was put under high pressure from the very start, as the army required the Bradley trainer in 10 months at the most. Their plan was to show the Bradley combat simulator during a military conference in 1981. In Battlezone, 
Players used twin sticks as an interface, while the Bradley trainer used an adapted gunnery yoke. This allowed the user to aim across both an X and Y axis. The idea was to make it more realistic for training purposes, but only two prototypes were ever produced. The secret project was suddenly cancelled for unknown reasons, and no M2 Bradley crewman ever trained on the Bradley Combat Simulator system. Marine Doom In 1993, a small developer from Texas called ID Software released Doom, one of the pioneers of the first-person shooter or FPS video game genre. The game became an instant cult classic upon release, with the US Marine Corps even taking notice of the capabilities of its main character. Doom became a hit for several reasons. First, it was the son of the successful Wolfenstein 3D, a game developed by ID a year before. And second, the game had violence, speed, and momentum, the trinity of a fast-paced, adrenaline-high gaming session. Besides its mind-blowing gameplay, Doom was powered by a powerful game engine that allowed the developers to render it with beautiful, never-before-seen graphics. It was all rendered seamlessly, from the lethal arsenal of weapons that the main character used to the demons and hellish creatures he destroyed and its ominous, futuristic Mars base. The Doom Marine, or Doom Guy, was its legendary, silent main character, and the United States Marine Corps soon took notice. The USMC was interested in how an FPS game could offer cost-effective simulated training for its Leathernecks. However, in contrast to other branches of the armed forces, the Marine Corps had a smaller budget and were highly frugal when it came to military spending. In fact, the Marine Corps budget was about 5% of the Defense Department's total expenditure, and by 1995, they had a budgetary deficit and desperately required a cheaper way to train the rookies. Consequently, Marine Doom was born. The idea for Marine Doom came from the Modeling and Simulation Management Office. The office was tasked with finding a commercial product modified for Marine training needs, and Lieutenant Scott Barnett and Sergeant Dan Snyder were assigned to research PC games. Both Leathernecks spent hours playing every available game in the market to see which one could fill the needs of the Corps, but there was no need to look further after Doom 2 was released. Even young Marines were hyped about the new game. Doom 2 followed the formula of the first game, and Barnett and Snyder chose it for its supported networked multiplayer format that allowed easy modifications. The first change was made to the sci-fi Mars setting for a small desert village, while the demons were replaced by human enemies resembling Nazis. Although Marine Doom never became an official training tool, recruits were encouraged to play it, and it was installed on the government's PCs. In 1997, the commander of the Marines, General Charles C. Krulak, issued a directive supporting the use of PC games for strategic military purposes. In the end, Marine Doom cost about $15, and the game simulation became a precious asset of the Marines, encouraging them to think as a team and act accordingly under stressful circumstances. America's Army Released in 2002 as a recruiting tool to attract a generation of young men that had been born in a culture of violent video games and movies, America's Army was available for free to gain as much attention as possible. The game was entirely developed by the Army, and as expected, fully embraced the culture of the American fighting man. America's Army became a massive success from the propaganda perspective. The game's focus was on its online multiplayer FPS, where players could choose from different infantry roles, ranging from support machine gunners to medics and reconnaissance units. Although there were better multiplayer games available on the market, the game was praised for its focus on small unit technical maneuvers and the richness of its missions. Besides its PC and console format, it has also been adapted to virtual reality experiences for advanced combat simulations. IDW Comics even went on to publish a line of digital comics featuring content from the America's Army series. The game's success would span several expansions and updated versions, and it is still widely played to this day. Command Professional Edition Video game developer Slytherin's trajectory was vast and rich when it came to the number of its war-related game releases, and it eventually attracted the attention of the armed forces because of its Command Model Air Naval Operations game. Initially released in 2013, the successful game received an upgraded edition called Command Professional Edition in 2015. Like its predecessor, 
Command PE featured a physics-based battle space environment simulation tool used by the military for logistics and analysis training. Ian McNeil, CEO of Slytherin, specified that military professionals are attracted to the game for the quantity of military asset data it offers. McNeil went on to say that, quote, We spent decades researching the data that goes into command, and the game has every conceivable weapon system, aircraft, ships, and radar from 1945 up until the near future. The end result was a video game with thousands of assets on highly accurate historical data related to the military and technological development of dozens of countries. This attention to detail gave a rich, diverse, and realistic gaming experience, especially for those interested in military logistics simulation. After the original Command Modern Operations took the wargaming community by surprise and became a huge success, the company released a professional edition for use by the government and military organizations. Other than the U.S. Armed Forces, the German Luftwaffe, the British Royal Navy, and certain NATO allies have also made use of the award-winning wargame to prepare its logistics teams for real-world events. Additionally, aircraft manufacturers like Boeing and Lockheed Martin have cooperated with the game developer to add another layer of realism to its game. Command has also been used in its commercial version by Russia and China, but they have refused to provide information about its military developments for secrecy purposes. The developer has recently released a 2021 version, with additional updates for both the commercial and professional editions. From new sensors, doctrines, and scenario builders, to realistic weather effects, a robust database, and improved artificial intelligence, Command Professional Edition 2021 is the most complete simulation to date. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. Also, let us know in the comments below what you think of these five games, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content.